Roblox is not just run on passion and dreams. Roblox is deeply run by player psychology. And understanding human psychology will make you a better developer and it will help you to analyze the reasons behind the success of the biggest games on Roblox. In my last video, I brought up the game design principle of core loops and how Steal a Brain Rot uses them to keep their players highly engaged and have high retention on their games to the point that they are the second biggest game on Roblox at all times. The Maslow's hierarchy of needs is interesting because it is different than other game design concepts. It's very rooted in psychology. Humans are motivated to fulfill certain needs, and these needs include physiological needs, safety and security needs, love and belonging needs, self-esteem needs, and self-actualization needs. And the idea is that humans try to fulfill their lower needs before trying to fulfill higher needs. If you're somebody who is homeless on the street, your biggest priority is not making that art piece that you so desperately want to finish. Because humans are motivated by these drives, they're motivated to fulfill them when they're playing a game. The same psychology applies in games as in real life. So one great example of this is Minecraft. This is a major reason why Minecraft is so successful. It taps into that need for survival. After you fulfill all those basic needs, then you can start to self-actualize. You can start to build amazing structures in your survival world. The whole point of Roblox is that it is a social platform. So this is what Roblox was built upon psychologically. So Brookhaven, let's start there. So different Roblox games will focus on different needs more. So Brookhaven, it doesn't focus so much on safety and security and physiological needs. It focuses more on that love and belonging aspect. And also for kids and teens playing this game, there's a lot of self-esteem and self-actualization that goes into it. They find it very fun to play like they're an adult, right? They have a house, they have kids. Now the self-actualization needs are owning your own house, having a job, having a family. They see themselves doing those things. And this is what people miss when they are looking at Roblox. They see the artistic side, right? They see the beautiful maps. They see the worlds. But I'm talking about the strategic side. But here's the problem. If devs think that passion is what magically made these games succeed, most of them won't be able to replicate it. All right, next, Bed Wars. So Bed Wars was a very successful game on Roblox. And this game taps into two very key drives. This game taps into the physiological needs of food and shelter, right? Because you have a base and you have to protect that from other players. You have to protect your bed. That's all about survival. The second most important need that this game taps into is self-esteem. So after you've set up your base and you are already surviving in game, it taps into your need for achievement, your need for confidence to dominate others in competition. And that makes players feel good about themselves. They feel like they are better than their opponents. That's why we like competitive games like Bed Wars and Arsenal. So Bed Wars was very successful and this is a huge reason for it. People love competition, but it's not random. It is deeply psychological. It is rooted in the need to feel good about yourself, to have confidence, self-esteem, respect from others, and to be a unique individual who has skill, right? You want to feel like you're competent. You want to feel like, I know how to beat people in this game. Now, most devs, they don't even recognize that these dynamics exist, right? I am not the biggest developer in the world, but I am the only one teaching this out in the open. And most devs, they can't even explain to you why their games succeed. They can't explain to you why it taps into human psychology. Meanwhile, you go on YouTube and people will talk all day about how human psychology is why videos are successful, right? It keeps people's attention when you're engaging, when you hook them in a certain way. But then the second that you talk about it on Roblox, oh no, don't say that. You're going to expose the truth about how games actually work. It's not just magic, right? That's where people start getting mad at you because you're exposing the truth, which is that, right, passion is a driver for creativity. Absolutely. But strategy guides that passion. And competitive markets like Roblox increase the need for strategy. You have to have a plan and an approach to 
dominate the Roblox platform. You have to outcompete other devs for players' attention. Why? Roblox is a market, and supply and demand dictate markets. That is how economies work. And when there is more supply to meet the demand of players, that means that you must find ways to differentiate yourself. You must make your game better in some way. And the way that you do that is by making the game more fun and tapping into player psychology more. Now, a lot of people will dislike the idea of tapping into player psychology. They think it's wrong, but it's not. All it is, is tapping into how the human mind already works and using it to make your game more enjoyable for people. When your game is based on these needs, you're making them feel great emotions. You're making them feel good about themselves. You're making them feel an increased sense of confidence. You're making them feel like they can win at something, like they can dominate in an arena of other players. So using player psychology, unlike what a lot of people would say, is not manipulative. It is empowering. You are giving players what they want. Their brain is begging you for that. They want to feel like they're fighting for their survival. They want to feel loved and they want to feel like they belong. Oh man, I'm getting killed in game. Bet this guy's self-esteem needs are getting fulfilled right now. Bro just killed a YouTuber. But devs need to stop ignoring player psychology and game design. New devs need to take on strategy first thinking. And a lot of that comes from studying the market of Roblox, looking at Roblox like the competitive economy that it is. Devs assume that the competition of Roblox is who is the most passionate. And while that does influence game success to a degree, right? Creativity is important. The real competition of Roblox is who is most aligned with player psychology. Players don't care about the level of effort you put in your game. They care about whether or not the game is fun. And that question is not answered just by being a passionate dev. It is answered by taking on a strategy first mindset, recognizing the need for understanding these principles, and then applying them in your games. And the second that devs start to understand this is the second that more devs become successful on this platform. Because now the magic has gone away. That's why people don't like hearing these things because it takes away the magic, right? Oh, games are just magical creations. But the truth is there is a science behind why games are successful and we can look at it and we can break it down. And it doesn't take you being somebody with 500,000 CCU to understand this. When devs understand these frameworks, it gives them a new lens to view top games on this platform because most people are viewing games with the lens of, okay, is this game a cash grab or is this game a passion project? When really, that is a false dichotomy. Games are not cash grabs or passion projects. Games have varying levels of complexity. They have varying levels of love put into them. And most simple games that people call cash grabs or slop have more creativity put into them than people would like to admit. What about the modelers working on that game? What about the people who sit down in Blender for hours? What people are missing is nuance. The game can be made strategy first and it can be made with passion at the same time. Passion is mainly put into the components of a game, not the overarching game itself. Most devs who make simulators are operating strategy first to varying degrees. They are following what is proven to work on Roblox. But then in the process of making that game, they make assets, they make models, they make UI, passion and creativity are put into it. But the game as a whole has been aligned towards the target of reaching player desire. So marketing guides the project as a whole. Your passion is the fuel that goes in that engine of strategy. But if we just act like the fuel itself is what's running the whole machine, we are ignoring the reality. There is a machine of strategy underneath Roblox, but we paint over it this veneer of passion. Oh, this game, I just made it with my heart and soul. Meanwhile, devs are planning out engaging core loops how to tap into players' dopamine, how to make their games addicting, how to use fear of missing out. This is the first channel to openly talk about strategy-first Roblox game development. That's why it's so controversial, because to the hobbyist hive mind that thinks that Roblox games are just about passion, it is heresy. But what people don't recognize, passion and strategy can coexist, because you can see that you're just, say, 
taking inspiration from a trend. You're making your own steal a brain rot type game, or you're making a game like Grow a Garden. And then inside of that trend, you add in your creativity, right? I see people making steal a developer, steal a car. We need to align our games around player desire first, not our own heart's desire. That is the point of this channel. Is the problem with the Roblox community is it tends to put emotions above everything else, and it thinks that emotions are truth, when in reality, facts and data are truth. What is subjective is saying that a game feels soulless. Oh, this game feels soulless. No, the game feels soulless to you, but to Timmy or to Sally playing the game on their iPad, that game feels enjoyable and fun and unique. So this is subjective. This is what front page devs don't want you to know. Game design is more important than every in-studio skill. Making your game align with the player's mind. Because if they have you just following your heart and making whatever you feel like, you aren't a competitor to them. But the second that you step out of that default Roblox developer mold of just following passion, you become a competitor in the marketplace. And they can't have that, right? So they will swat away anybody from watching content like this. They will say, oh no, don't watch that content. Look away, look away guys. This is, you can't know the truth about development or else, oh no. Big bad competitors might come onto the front page. Smarty's gonna make another Crispy who makes a 1000 CCU game. Smarty's gonna make more successful devs. We have to stop this. The front page is a machine built upon strategy first. Are some passion projects there? Absolutely. But 90% of the front page is strategic thinking getting those devs there. But they won't admit that to you because then the Roblox community will come out and attack them. This is why I call the community the Church of Roblox. It tries to enforce this dogma. Money corrupts creativity. Passion is the highest virtue. Strategy is evil. And the reason is that they think that it prevents strategy-first developers from existing and taking over Roblox. Because if that happens, oh no, Roblox has been ruined. But here's the truth. The sacred garden of Roblox doesn't exist anymore. Roblox is a competitive war zone. So player psychology runs the front page of Roblox. A huge part of strategy first thinking is recognizing that and learning about it and not judging it, right? Because this is just how humans work. And the more that people understand this, the better games they're going to create. Front page devs trying to gatekeep this information is born out of a scarcity mindset. Fear that if more devs learn about strategy first Roblox game development, that now all these competitors are going to come and take away their players and their revenue. I am the greatest heretic to the church of Roblox. I'm going to learn from what works. And then I'm going to teach it to my community. I'm going to bring my observations out. You can use it to make another hit game like Crispy did. Made a game after watching my videos. And he hopped on a trend. And he made simple games first. And that allowed him to make a successful game in his first month of being a developer. We are uncovering some truths here that are very rarely set. It is based on business-minded thinking, and whether it's good or bad depends on your use of it. Strategy First Roblox game development is a tool. So take this information and apply it into your own games and share the results you get with the community. If you want to get more information like this, join Scripting Secrets below. Click here to learn more about Strategy First Roblox game development, and I will see you next video.